Hi friends. So here I am to read another chapter of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle by Betty McDonald. Um, this is chapter five that I'm going to read right now. And if you are just seeing this for the first time, you can easily find on either my Facebook page or the YouTube channel where you found this, which is just called Miss Terry. Um, then you can find chapters one through four. And I will keep it up as long as I can. Um, I believe the publisher of this one said that they need to be taken down by the end of the regular school year. Uh, which would still be like another month or so. So, anyway, I hope you're enjoying. And let me know if it's um, hard to hear or anything like that. Or if you have a certain book that you're hoping I read next. So, chapter 5 is called The Radish Cure. Up to the time of this story, Patsy was just an everyday little girl. Sometimes she was good, and sometimes she was naughty. But usually she did what her mother told her without too much fuss. But one morning, Patsy's mother filled the bathtub with nice warm water and called Patsy to come and take her bath. Patsy came into the bathroom, but when she saw the nice warm tub of water... She began to scream and yell and kick and howl like a wild animal. Naturally, her mother was quite surprised to see her little girl acting so peculiarly. But she didn't say anything, just took off Bat Patsy's bathrobe and said, Now, Patsy, stop all this nonsense and hop into the tub. Patsy gave a piercing shriek and ran from the bathroom stark naked and yelling, I won't take a bath. I won't ever take a bath. I hate baths. I hate baths. I hate baths. Patsy's mother let the water out of the tub and went downstairs to telephone her friends and find out if their children had ever behaved in this unusual fashion, if it was catching and what to do about it. First, she called Mrs. Brown. She said, hello, Mrs. Brown. This is Patsy's mother, and I'm having such a time this morning. Patsy simply will not take a bath. Pardon me just a minute, Mrs. Brown. She put down the telephone receiver and went over to Patsy, who was standing in the kitchen doorway, listening to the telephone conversation and feeling very important. Patsy said, what did Mrs. Brown say to do with me, mother? Patsy's mother said, she hasn't told me yet, but while I'm finding out, finding out, you'd better march right upstairs and get dressed, and then you can pick up that messy, sticky pasting work you left all over your room last night. Don't come downstairs until every single thing is put away. Patsy's mother picked up the telephone, and Mrs. Brown said, I'm sorry, but I can't offer any suggestions because our little Prunella just adores to bathe. Perhaps Mrs. Grotto could help you. So Patsy's mother called Mrs. Grotto. She said, Hello, Mrs. Grotto. I just called to ask if you could help me with Patsy. She won't take a bath, and I'm at my wit's end. Mrs. Grotto said, Well, frankly, I don't know what to suggest, because our little paraphernalia simply worships her bath. Of course, she's quite a remarkable child anyway. Why, Thursday afternoon, she said, Yes, yes, I know, said Patsy's mother quickly. Goodbye, Mrs. Grotto. Thank you anyway. Then Patsy's mother called Mrs. Broomrack. Good morning, Mrs. Broomrack, she said a little too brightly. I wonder if you would do me a favor. Why, of course, dear, of course, said Mrs. Broomrack. Well, said Patsy's mother, this morning, for the first time in her life, our little Patsy won't take a bath. The very idea seems to make her hysterical, and I don't know what to do. Mrs. Broomrack said, Why, you poor dear, all alone in that big house with that unmanageable child. Personally, I don't know what to say because our little cormorant looks forward so to taking a bath. Bathing is his favorite pastime. In fact, sometimes we can't get him out of the tub. Why don't you let him stay in then, said Patsy's mother. Because he might drown, squealed Mrs. Broomrack. Well, said Patsy's mother as she hung up the phone. By this time, she was feeling rather depressed because it seemed that bathing was the most popular indoor sport with every child in town but her own dirty little girl. In desperation, she decided to call Mrs. Pigglewiggle. 
She should know about children, thought Patsy's mother. She certainly has her house crawling with them day and night. It certainly was fortunate for Patsy's mother that she thought of Mrs. Pigglewiggle, because although Mrs. Pigglewiggle has no children of her own and lives in an upside-down house, she understands children better than anybody in the whole world. She's always ready to stop whatever she's doing and have a tea party. She's glad to have children dig worms in her petunia bed. She has a large trunk full of scraps for doll clothes and another trunk full of valuable rocks with gold in them. She's delighted to have children pick up and look at all the little things which she keeps on her tables. And when Hubert Prentice dropped the glass ball that snowed on the children when you shook it, she said, Heavens, Hubert, don't cry. I'm so glad this happened. For years and years I've wanted to know what was in that glass ball. Mrs. Pigglewiggle takes it for granted that you will want to try on her shoes and go wiggling around on high heels, which is probably why she was not at all surprised when Patsy's mother told her about the bath. I suppose we all come to it sooner or later, she said. Well, from my experience, I would say that the radish cure is probably the quickest and most lasting. The radish cure, said Patsy's mother. Yes, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle. The radish cure is just what Patsy needs. All you have to do is buy one package of radish seeds. The small red round ones are the best, and don't get that long white icicle type. Then let Patsy strictly alone, as far as washing is concerned, for several weeks. When she has about half an inch of rich black dirt all over her, and after she's asleep at night, scatter radish seeds on her arms and head. Press them, press them in gently, and then just wait. I don't think you'll have to water them, because we're in the rainy season now, and she probably will go outdoors now and then. When the little radish plants have three leaves, you may begin pulling the largest ones. Oh yes, Patsy will probably look quite horrible before the radish cure is over. So if you find that she's scaring too many people, or her father objects to having her around, let me know and I'll be glad to take her over here. You see, all my visitors are children, and dirt doesn't frighten them. Patsy's mother thanked Mrs. Picklewickle very, very much for her kind advice, and then called up Patsy's father, and told him to be sure and bring home a package of radish seeds. Early red globe, she thought they were called. The next morning, she didn't say one single word to Patsy about a bath, and so Patsy was sweet and didn't act like a wild animal. The next day was the same, and so was the next and the next. When Sunday came, Patsy was a rather dark, blackish-gray color, so her mother suggested that she stay home from Sunday school. Patsy's father, who by this time had been told of the radish cure, didn't say anything to Patsy about washing, but he winced whenever he looked at her. By the end of the third week, they had to keep Patsy indoors all the time, because one morning she skipped out to get the mail, and the postman, on seeing her straggly, uncombed, dust-caked hair and the rapidly forming layer of topsoil on her face, neck, and arms gave a terrified yell and fell down the front steps. Patsy seemed quite happy, though. Of course, it was getting hard to tell how she felt as her face was so caked with dirt that she couldn't smile. And she talked, Oi, kiss, I'm Patsy and I own a carath. She also had to take little teeny bites of food because she couldn't open her mouth more than a crack. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me, I had to get a sip of drink. Naturally, her father and mother had to stop having any friends in to visit except in the evening when Patsy was in bed. And even then, they were not at all comfortable for fear Patsy would wake up and call, Ingy, a uh, ink, a uh, ar, eh? which meant, bring me a drink of water, Daddy. At last, however, the day came when Patsy was ready to plant. That night, when she was asleep, her mother and father tiptoed into her room and very gently pressed radish seeds into her forehead, her arms, and the backs of her hands. When they had finished and were standing by her bed, gazing fondly at their handiwork, Patsy's father said, Repulsive little thing, isn't she? Patsy's mother said, Why, George, that's a terrible thing to save your own child. My little girl is buried so deep in that dirt that I can't even remember what she looks like, said Patsy's father, and he stamped down the stairs. The radish cure is certainly hard on the parents. 
Quite a few days after that, Patsy awoke one morning, and there on the back of her hand, in fact, on the backs of both hands, and on her arms and her forehead, were green leaves. Patsy tried to brush them off, but they just bent over and sprang right up again. She jumped out of bed and ran down the stairs to the dining room where her mother and father were eating breakfast. Look, look at my hands, she squeaked. Her father said, Behold the bloom of youth. And her mother said, George, then jumped up briskly, went over to Patsy, took a firm hold of one of the plants on her forehead and gave it a quick jerk. Patsy squealed and her mother showed her the little red radish she had pulled. Patsy tried to pull one out of her arm, but her hands were so caked with dirt that they couldn't grasp the little leaves, so her mother had to pull them. When they had finished one hand and part of the left arm, Patsy suddenly said, Other, our aunt, uh, ah. What did you say? asked her mother, busily pulling the radishes and putting them in neat little piles on the dining room table. Aunt Ahath, said Patsy so plainly that it cracked the mud on her left cheek. I want a bath. Patsy's mother said, I think it better be a shower. And without another word, she went in and turned on the warm water. Patsy was in the shower all that day. She used up two whole bars of soap, and she didn't even come out for lunch. But when her father came home for dinner, there she was, waiting for him at the door, clean, sweet, and smiling, and in her hand she had a plate of little red radishes. And that's the end of chapter five. My little girl, who's not that little anymore, she's almost 13, she went through a long phase where she didn't want to take a shower or a bath, but... I didn't go so far as to plant seeds, but it's a good idea. So, you never know what might happen, so take your bath or shower. Okay, bye friends. I'll read chapter 6 tomorrow.